thanks for coming to the Heritage tonight. Um, all the technical equipment that you can see here, um, these are the gentlemen from a TGA recording in Benton Harbor, and we are actually broadcasting this program live on the internet. Tonight, I'd like to introduce Dr. Tom Goodwin, professor of paleobiology at Andrews University, where he's taught for 17 years. So uh, allow me to introduce Dr. Tom Goodwin. I'm, uh, I'm delighted to be here this evening. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Ice Age mammals, particularly Ice Age giants from this region of Michigan. Now, what I'd like to do <coughs> is give you a little bit of insight into how we as paleontologists go about telling stories from these animals. Let's take a look at this tooth. Now, I have here specimens from the Andrews University Museum, and let me just, just step over here for a second and, and show you uh, some of these specimens. Uh, if you compare this with the tooth, I'll show you on the sc screen there in a minute. That tooth, the tooth on the screen is about this long. All right. So the leg is telling us this is still growing. The teeth is telling us this is an adult. In modern elephants, the males get bigger than the females. And the way they do that is to grow longer in life. And so if we interpret this as a male, then we can put these lines of evidence together and it suggests that our animal was probably a male, roughly 25 years old. Uh, in your map of where uh, these have been found, there was nothing in the northern part of the uh, lower peninsula, the northern half. Uh, was that the extent of their range or, or some other <laughs> Really, really good question. That? There may have been a lag between when the ice melts back and when there was sufficient food to make it worthwhile for a mammoth or mastodon to wander up there. Tonight, we have Dr. Ben Secunda, who comes to us from the University of Michigan. Please welcome Dr. Secunda. Well, thank you very much for coming out. As the Potawatomi would say, Anin, hello. Uh, if there's one lesson that I want you all to take away from this, the, the secret to why the Potawatomi are still here is that phrase right there, get to know your neighbors. It was a strategy, uh, neighborliness, and getting to know the early settlers and uh, getting to cooperate with them. This is the legacy of all this Potawatomi, the strategy, the money flowing everywhere. This is it. This is how much influence one group can have on settlement patterns. And yes, even Kansas and Texas get into the act. That's what the strategy resulted in. That's the Potawatomi legacy all over the country. And there's actually more to it, but that'll have to wait for another time. So when you start traveling the highways and byways around here and passing by things like Pipestone Road and things like that, know that there's a history and there's a reason why they have those names. And I thank you very much for your time. My son-in-law is from the Pokagon tribe, he and his family. And I'm just currently reading a uh, historical novel by, I think it's Thomas Alexander Thom, T-H-O-M. He wrote a book about Tecumseh. And I just got very excited when you started sharing information because this author has done a lot of research, though it's a novel. But so many of the things you shared are quite in concurrence with the novel, so I found it very interesting reading. I think Leopold and Tecumseh would have agreed very much on the issues. I agree. They just disagree on the solution and the remedy. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. 